am a hypocrite. I hate to admit this, but it's the truth. I hold two opinions that are diametrically opposed. I don't like feeling forced into things, and I like rotation. This is a clear case of cognitive dissonance. Rotation forces you into new cards, by making your old cards illegal to play. Yet, I say I dislike feeling forced into things. But I hold another opinion. Most games don't execute rotation particularly well. Rotation, for most, is more of a jumping off point rather than a palate cleanser. I know I've talked about rotation in the past, many years ago now, but I want to talk about it again. Rotation as a concept was first introduced to TCGs in January of 1995. After playing with ban lists in the last third of 1994, Wizards decided to just remove Alpha, Beta, Arabian Nights, Antiquities, and Legends from the card pool. Mark Rosewater has said this was a way to keep the game from hitting a power or complexity ceiling too early, and remove cards deemed mistakes in one clean sweep. It's worth noting that the ban list shrunk from some 30 cards down to 3 with the rotation of these 5 sets. The story is that the Usenet was up in arms about this. The Type 2, what Standard was originally called, was going to kill magic. But finding the original announcement and the discussion of it on the Usenet, people were very welcoming of it. I'm not sure where this story comes from. Nevertheless, the original Type 2 had revised the third core set. From Unlimited, it removed 39 cards and in turn added 35 cards from Arabian Nights and Antiquities. This resulted in 475 cards total being removed from the card pool. This number is greatly inflated by the Legend set with its 310 card count. Alpha, Beta and Unlimited all contain the same card pool. Type 1, what we now call Vintage, of course existed. A Type 2 can't exist without a Type 1. People did have the avenue to play with the cards that had been removed from the Type 2 format. This is where it gets tricky for me. I can only base my opinions on what I can see from the sets and the few comments I've heard about Magic from way back when. But it seems to me Magic was perfectly set up for rotation to be implemented. The core set was the heart and soul of Magic. Its identity. It is Magic. It has been dubbed both a base and a core set for a reason. The rest of the year's product can be built from it. It's very easy to see people researching what is in Revised, using what they could from older sets and building from there. The appeal of the game wasn't gutted from rotation. This isn't how things are today. Magic doesn't really have much of an identity. It's a platform for set pieces. Those set pieces draw people in, and once they rotate out, the game has to have something already in place to wean these people from year to year. If you don't appeal to them anymore, that's when they see rotation as their door out of the hobby. You have given them no reason to be invested in your new product. If they didn't buy it, for all intents and purposes, they don't have cards anymore. The magic of today is actually very bad at rotation because it doesn't remain appealing. People just play standard a bit, then go play any other format where they don't have to keep up with the Joneses. They are given no emotional investment to keep playing. That said, this initial rotation wasn't the most ideal situation itself. The remaining sets were Revised, The Dark, and Fallen Empires. Two expansions being frequently mentioned in discussions of Magic's worst sets, and the card pool was fairly shallow at some 500 cards. Thankfully, by June 1995, a much beloved and rather large set, Ice Age, would be released. Of course, there are games that have been worse at executing rotation. The old Naruto CCG is rather infamous for rotating out sets 1 through 10, when the game only had 15 sets total, while having no core set or reprints to facilitate it. Over time, the game just started gradually hemorrhaging players, dying with its 28th set, a tie-in for Ninja Storm 3. This has been blamed on that initial rotation, as it seems to mark the start of a gradual decline. 
Kaijudo Rise of the Duel Masters has a very similar story to tell. There is a certain level of animosity, even outright hatred, towards the concept of rotation. It's exactly what I said, being forced into new cards and seeing older cards become useless. People don't like that. Unfortunately, this argument generally comes from people who play non-rotating games and fail to comprehend that their ban lists and power creep have the exact same effect. They force you to buy new cards. Instead of making your cards illegal to play, they make them obsolete. The key here is the psychological aspect of it. Power is tantalizing. It's attractive. People want to win. These cards make that easier. People want the power of these cards. Keyword, want. Power creep, for all the complaints about it, does have that benefit over rotation in its raw form. It makes people want new product. It plays to psychology. I think from here you can get an idea of where I'm going with this. For rotation to be executed properly, you need to remain appealing and sets need to be correctly designed for it. Rotation needs people to want the new product, not need it. They'll go away if they need the new product. You need them to want it. I think there is one game that does this pretty darn well, and that's Force of Will. It's not perfect. It's been known to employ power creep and rotation at the same time for reasons that escape me. But the core of well-executed rotation is there. Force of Will's core identity is its ruler card. It's the character card you play as, and it's the emotional attachment to the game. With few exceptions such as the disastrous new Valhalla Cluster, each set includes core deck components for each ruler included. Each set, in its own way, is a core set. The game is perpetually ready for rotation. But more than this, the game banks heavily on you finding new rulers appealing. From an aesthetic aspect, from a mechanical aspect, or by being a returning character you were already liked. That way, Forceville has upwards of 10 opportunities per year to keep people invested with the game's new product. It's continuously trying to appeal to that want factor. This is what a rotating game should be doing, trying to keep people invested. If you can keep them interested in the new product and wanting to change decks, they don't mind that their older cards are no longer legal. They're not thinking about those older cards as much anymore. You've transferred that attachment to the newer product and you didn't force them into anything. This is a successful rotation and the inability to do this successfully is why so many games fail at execution. They don't transfer attachment to newer cards before the older cards are removed and what remains is unsatisfactory. The benefits of rotation are very real. It shifts the meta and keeps things fresh. It slows down power creep considerably. It prevents devs from having to compete with themselves. It allows an ebb and flow in power levels over time. It keeps the game easy to jump into. It promotes game health, but the execution needs to land well. After all is said and done, you need to keep your established audience and the resulting format needs to be fun. There are serious ramifications for failing miserably at rotation. You've given people closure and a way out. At its absolute worst, what remains is a horrible experience. This has been some gamer dude, and thanks for watching.